the currency unit of Great Britain is the pound sterling, which is now divided into 100 pence. They changed over to decimal currency in 1971, uh, didn't they? Is it more convenient? It is, especially for tourists. And the cost of living is rising, isn't it? Oh, yes, and quite substantially. Let's go on. London, as all other big cities of the world, has serious transport and environmental problems. Traffic jams, traffic fumes, road accidents. Even the underground can't solve these problems. The London Underground has eight tube lines. The English are still driving on the left. Are there any more countries with left-hand traffic? They have left-hand traffic in Australia, Sweden, Iceland, Japan, and some other countries. I'm afraid, though, we're wandering from the point. Are there any trolley buses in London? No. No trams. No trolley buses. Apart from private cars, the four basic ways of getting about are bus, underground, taxi, or on foot. They say walking is often quicker. Of course, if you're only going a short distance. Sometimes it is. There are serious traffic problems in London. And now, a few more slides. I think every Soviet tourist comes to this place. This monument to Karl Marx was erected by international subscription in 1956, the house where Marx used to come. Now there's a library named after him. In this house, Lenin edited the newspaper Iskra. In 1902, Lenin worked a lot in the reading hall of the British Museum. In the library register, we can see both Marx and Lenin's signatures. But uh, there is no name of Lenin here. The thing is that Lenin was listed in the library under the name of Jacob Richter. Jacob Richter is no one else but Lenin. Have you visited any places connected with Russian names? I've already told you about it, but it's really impossible to mention everything here. And now, Cambridge, please. Cambridge and Oxford are very old university towns. Cambridge University consists of 19 colleges. Enthusiastic sportsmen find the River Cam ideal for boating. By the way, women students were not admitted to Cambridge almost until the end of the 19th century. Oxford University dates from the 12th century and is also composed of a number of colleges. Only a very small percent of the British students admitted to Cambridge and Oxford are of working class origin. The same goes for public schools. Schools for the privileged. Are engineers trained in the universities? No, only in colleges of technology. But one can also receive technical education in the latest universities of technology. Here, you see the campus of Sussex University, one of the new universities founded by government decision after the Second World War to found autonomous universities. You know, it's impossible to speak about higher education as a unified thing in Great Britain. Courses are enormously varied. Did you meet many people in London? Yes, quite a lot. You know, it was a specialised trip and we were often invited to meet people working in industry, transport, and technology. Besides these booklets, the firms we visited presented us with some slides and the film we've just seen. We've been only to London. And now it's time to view a bit of Scotland, where everything is like a fairy tale. Forts, lakes, hills, castles. These dances come from an ancient Celtic culture. A charming sight.
Scotland is a country of beautiful lakes, mountains and castles. Mention should be made here that Scotland is not a highly industrialised part of Great Britain. Edinburgh, Scotland's capital city. A wonderful town where you pass from scenes of tales of long ago to modern shops and attractions. The past and the present are so blended that the old seems more real than the new. Scott Monument, the statue of Sir Walter Scott, the great son and writer of Scotland. This region produces 90% of all Britain's whiskey. It's widely exported into the USA and other countries. One can't possibly be in Scotland and miss a football match. A match between the teams of Glasgow and Edinburgh. And these places are full of the spirit of Robert Burns, Scotland's national poet. Not far from Glasgow, in Alloway, there is a small cottage. Here Robert Burns was born and here he lived. His birthplace, a simple thatched cottage, is a museum now. It's open to the public. show you a place of interest connected with famous English writers. Here you are. The house Bernard Shaw was born in is far, far away from London. It's in Dublin, the capital of Ireland. Not many people think of Shaw as an Irishman, but that's in fact what he was. But in this house he lived for many years, he died here at the age of 94. When he came to the Soviet Union in the 30s, he was already an old man. I've read somewhere that in his youth, he met Tangles and go to Chekhov. Mm -hmm. Every day at 10.15, Bernard Shaw started working at his desk. died in this wheelchair. Stratford-on-Avon, a small town in the centre of England. It has become famous as the birthplace of William Shakespeare, the great poet and dramatist of England. This is the house where William Shakespeare was born in 1564 and spent his early years. Part of the building is furnished and partly accommodates a unique collection of objects illustrative of the life, time and works of the poet. Shown here is the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. It is a famous attraction for people from all over the world. The great plays of Shakespeare are as popular today as many years ago. So, that will be the end of our trip to the British Isles. Just a few glimpses of England. Thank you very much for your attention.